Dear colleagues, I'm sorry I cannot be present in person at your myositis meeting in Lucknow, but I will be happy to discuss classification criteria of inflammatory myopathies with you through this video. I will start by giving a brief history of criteria for idiopathic inflammatory myopathies or IAM or myositis. Then I will give a brief summary of the methodology applied for the Euler ACR criteria projects and the results, some recommendations. And finally, I will demonstrate how you can use a web calculator to classify your individual patient. The first set of modern criteria for myositis were proposed by Dr. Metzger in 1970. Since then, several sets of criteria have been proposed, most of them um, based on expert opinion. This formed the basis for the project to develop the new cri classification criteria that started in 2004. The aims of this criteria project were to develop classification criteria that would distinguish IAM from other major mimicking conditions and also to separate the major subgroups of the IAM. The criteria should be data-driven and include uh, a test reliability. And this should be a combined effort to address both adult and childhood onset myositis and be performed an international multidisciplinary collaboration. And in 2017, we had the results, the criteria that were approved by EULAR and ACR. The EULAR ACR classification criteria for adult and juvenile idiopathic inflammatory myopathies and their major subgroups. And this is an overview of the process of the project. We started by identification and definition of potential variables to be used to collect the data. Then there was a long data collection phase, phase an analytic phase, validation phase. There were consensus discussions. And finally, our proposed criteria were reviewed by the ACR EULAR committee and endorsed. We started by defining uh, variables to be used for data collection. And in total, we collected data for 93 variables. And these were based upon previous criteria and also with some addition of uh, variables that were suggested by experts. The variables can be grouped into demographic data, clinical muscle variables, skin manifestations, other clinical variables, including interstitial lung disease and dysphagia, laboratory data, including muscle enzymes and autoantibodies, muscle biopsy data, EMG, and MRI. In total, 47 clinics worldwide in, uh, from North, South America, Europe, and Asia contributed with the uh, data to this project. And we collected data from almost 1,000 cases with myositis and more than 600 cases uh, in the comparator group with mimicking conditions. And approximately 20% of the cases had uh, childhood onset. The major subgroups included in the project were juvenile dermatomyositis, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, inclusion by myositis, whereas the other groups were smaller. Based on the data and the statistical analysis, these listed variables were the ones that had the highest impact to discriminate cases with inflammatory myopathies from the comparators. And as you can see, they are listed here. First, age at onset, then clinical muscle variables, including objective symmetric weakness of the proximal upper and lower extremities, neck flexes weaker than neck extensors, 
and in the legs, proximal muscles are relatively weaker than distal muscles. Skin variables including heliotrope rash, Gottron signs and papules, and other clinical variables in dysphagia. Laboratory values uh, included elevated serum levels of any of the muscle enzyme. They are equally uh, important. CK, LD, AST, or ALT can be used. Antigen 1 antibody positivity and muscle biopsy variables. Endomycer infiltration of mononuclear cells surrounding but not invading myofibers, perimycial and or perivascular infiltration of mononuclear cells, perifascicular atrophy and rim vacuoles. Each variable uh, uh, gets a, a, a score point indicating its weight in the total aggregated score. And as you can see, there are two versions. One with score points for patients with muscle biopsy data and one for patients without muscle biopsy data. And notably, this version can only be used if you have one of the typical skin variables associated with dermatomyositis. The score points adds, add up. To we tested different uh, statistical models. And the model that performed uh, with the best sensitivity and specificity turned out to be this probability model that's um, presented in this slide. So the best balance between sensitivity and specificity uh, can be found at the probability of 55%. Uh, and this corresponds to a total aggregated score as you can see here, between 5.5 and 5.7 for patients without muscle biopsy data and a total aggregated score between 6.7 and 7.6 .6 for patients with muscle biopsy data. A patient was defined to have myositis or IAM with a cutoff uh, of a probability of 55% or more. After a patient has been identified and classified as having IIM, we can use a classification tree to further subgroup the patient. The first variable in the tree is age at onset. And if this is below 18 and a patient has one of the typical skin features of dermatomyositis, you will classify your patients as juvenile dermatomyositis and without the skin rash as juvenile polymyositis. If the patient has an onset above 18 and one of the skin features and one of the clinical muscle features, you will classify your patients as dermatomyositis and without the clinical muscle features as amyopathic dermatomyositis. And if the patient does not have any of these typical skin features uh, and you have a clinical feature of finger flexor weakness or a muscle biopsy uh, feature with rimmed vacuoles, your patient will be classified as inclusion, uh, inclusion body myositis. And if not uh, any of these are present, your patient will be classified as polymyositis. It is likely that the patients with immune-mediated necrotizing myopathies are uh, in this group of polymyositis, but they were too few to be identified as a separate entity. To facilitate classification of individual patients, we have developed a web-based calculator. And as you can see here, it has all the variables and where you tick yes or no, uh, and with that, you will get a probability range uh, up here and also a sub-diagnosis. I will illustrate how this works uh, with uh, two cases. I will start by presenting this case. A 30-year-old man who presented with pain in joints and muscle, with cough, shortness of breath, 
and with a mild skin rash over his dorsal side of finger joints and eyelids. He had mild symmetrical muscle weakness of his pelvic muscles. So let's see how we can use the web calculator to uh, classify this patient. We start with his uh, muscle symptoms and age. Uh, so that uh, by taking this symmetric weakness of the proximal lower extremities and in the legs proximal muscles are weaker than the distal muscles and his age. We get the probability score range between 9 and 100 percent which is not very helpful. He also had arthritis and symptoms from the lungs, but they are not among the variables in the new criteria. But he also had the skin rash, compatible with heliotrope rash, Gottron's papillosan sign. By taking the skin features, the probability score reaches 100% for the subgroup dermatomyositis. So this is not uh, surprising. This patient was classified as dermatomyositis. The next case is a man who presented at the year of uh, at the age of forty nine years, with two years history of slowly progressive weakness of his arms and leg muscles. He had difficulties with swallowing, but he had no other organ manifestation. So let's see how we can use the web calculator to classify this man. Uh, he had moderate weakness of neck flexors and psoas muscle. He had difficulties with swallowing. He had elevated CK levels and his myositis specific autoantibodies were negative. So let's see how this works. So uh, we take his age, his uh, muscle weakness, symmetric, uh, of the proximal lower extremities and neck flexors were weaker than neck extensors. He didn't have the, uh, any of the skin features. He had dysphagia. He was negative for anti jo one antibodies and he had elevated CK levels. With this, we find a probability score between 81 and 96% uh, and probable IAM. But as you remember, patients without skin rash, here we need to include information on the muscle biopsy. So here's a summary of his muscle biopsy report where you can see he had hyper and atrophic fibers, but no inflammatory cell infiltrates. So let's see where we include this information in the web calendar. So he didn't have any endomycel infiltration, no perimycer or perivascular infiltration, no perifacicular atrophy, and no rim vacuoles. And with adding this information, you can see his probability score worsened. So now we cannot classify him as IAM, as the cutoff for definition of IAM is 55%. Some more uh, clinical information on this man. He was found to have fasciculations in his face and tongue. He was positive for anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies and he had a positive response with the mestinone test. And in addition, further genetic testing uh, disclosed mutations compatible with the muscle dystrophy named Kennedy's disease. This man actually was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis and Kennedy's disease and could not be classified as myositis. So the take home message is from this case that in patients without skin rash, a muscle biopsy is required. So there are limitations of the Euler ACR classification criteria for myositis. The first one is that only anti jo one antibodies made it into the criteria due to the low number of tested individuals for the other autoantibodies. Some new subtypes of IM could not be identified, such as the immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy, and this entity was not even recognized when we started the project. And likewise, anti-synthetase anti, -synthetase, anti, -synth anti -synth Antisynthetase syndrome 
could not be identified due to the lack of uh, data uh, that we collected. Thirdly, external validation in a cohort with cases and comparators is still needing and is being planned. So, we have some recommendations. The EULAR ACR classification criteria provide a score and a corresponding probability of having IIM. The recommended cutoff needed for classifying a patient as IIM is 5%. That corresponds to probable IAM. Definite IAM corresponds to probability of 90% or more, or a total aggregated score of 7.5 or more without and 8.7 with muscle biopsy data. And the definite IAM uh, is recommended when high specificity is required, such as in uh, clinical trials. Patients with pathognomonic skin rash of DM are accurately classified with the EULAR ACR classification criteria without including muscle biopsy data. For dermatomyositis patients without muscle involvement, a skin biopsy is recommended to e exclude uh, skin disorders that can mimic dermatomyositis. For patients Without dermatomyositis skin rash, a muscle biopsy is required. So in conclusion, the EULAR ACR classification criteria for adult and juvenile idiopathic inflammatory myopathies and their major subgroups represent a flexible model of classification criteria where not all variables need to be tested. The variables are easily accessible and well-defined and each variable has a given weight, a, a score point. The, there is a good performance of the classification criteria. They are data-driven and have partly been validated in external cohorts. The project was performed in a multidisciplinary fashion and in consensus. And the criteria are easy to use with the web calculator that you can find on this website. And finally, I would really like to acknowledge all the uh, investigators that contributed with uh, information to this major effort. And in particular, uh, to Anna Charlon and Matteo Botai at the Karolinska Institute who made most of the analysis. And I will also acknowledge all the organizations that supported the project. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.